Welcome to Project Me, the podcast. I'm your host, Tiffany Carter, the founder of Project Me, multimillionaire entrepreneur, former TV newscaster, money-making expert, female empowerment speaker, and self-proclaimed office supply addict. My mission is to take the mystery out of making big money. Every week on Project Me, the podcast, I'll share success tips, strategies, and stories from other entrepreneurs, experts, and millionaires, showing you exactly how you can achieve your most exceptional life. Now let's get to it. Exciting announcement for all of my listeners. I've officially opened my exclusive group, the Project Me Passive Income Posse, to the public. This group is by application only, so we can keep the group high vibe and spend our time, energy, and expertise only helping those of you who truly want massive success and impact. You get live weekly trainings from me, special guest coaches, and direct access to me and my business partner for all of your questions. To learn more and apply, go to projectmewithtiffany.com, click on work with me and select Project Me Posse. And of course, any questions, feel free to DM me at Project Me with Tiffany. Welcome to the podcast and posse Project Me with Tiffany Carter. I'm your host, Tiffany, and today I'm spilling the beans, or maybe I should say cash or how I made the cash. So I am going to lay it all out for you guys on how I made $270,000 in my first year of starting this business, Project Me with Tiffany Carter. So this is my first online personal brand based business. As many of you may know, I have another company that I've had for 11 years. It's the company that I was able to to leave being an employee and get into entrepreneurship working for myself. That's my seven figure business. That is in the niche of corporate America working with a lot of medical and health clients. Totally different. I'm giving you that background. Because a lot of us tell ourselves lies when we're looking at people online, when we get into the scroll hole, comparisonitis, even listening to podcasts, you know, we go, Oh, you know, I'm sure that you know, she already knew how to do all this, or she had a friend to show her, or maybe she's been doing it for years, and she rebranded or whatever crap we tell ourselves. And um, you will soon learn if you're not familiar with me, I will just spell it out, tell you how it is tell you with love, but I keep it real. My whole point is to take the mystery out of making big money so that you can make it for yourself. No one took that mystery away from me. So I'm paying it forward and doing it for all of you in a way that I hope is entertaining. (laughs) So here we go. Um, Here's the thing. We all have gifts. We are all born with innate, innate gifts. I call them like you have a leg up. I don't know if you guys have heard that expression. In fact, I don't know where it comes from. I don't know if it's a Midwest thing, but I'm using it anyway. So where you get a leg up in life, meaning where you have a natural born talent, or maybe it's just something that comes easy to you. So you see that with a lot of Olympic athletes. Okay, most of these people, maybe it's like a Michael Phelps, where he has like very abnormally long arms and a wide, wide, long hands and feet, it was almost like he was made to be an, you know, made to be an Olympic swimmer, right? Those are things you can't really change and alter about about yourself. Although with plastic surgery, we can alter a lot. Some of which people should probably just leave alone. Thank you. Um, Others of us are, um, you know, naturally great singers, but that doesn't mean, you know, you're all of a sudden on America's Got Talent. You've probably even made your singing better by taking lessons or things like that. I am a naturally gifted communicator. I have a great ability in order to teach things that can be overwhelming or complex or even sensitive. And I have a way of helping people understand them regardless of an educational background, regardless of familiarity, age, sex, whatever it is. And I like to think I do it with some humor. But that I didn't come out of like the womb like that. In fact, I was incredibly shy. I mean, part of that is because 
I was in an abusive household. So that natural gift of mine wasn't allowed to shine. But once it was, and I put training behind it and years of work behind it, well, now we're at where where we are today, right? I mean, you guys know that, you know, I'm a trained news broadcaster, I went to broadcast journalism school. So yes, I already had this gift. But I really crafted it. So we all have that. You're like, what the hell does this have to do, Tiffany, with how the hell you made all this money in your first year of a business that, you know, you've never done that business model before. I like to keep it real. And so I already came into this with a couple leg legs up. Okay, that sounds really wrong. But whatever, we're going with it. Anyway, um, I came in with the natural gift of being a professionally trained communicator and broadcaster, right? So it's not like I'm just the shy, awkward person who bought a podcast mic. All right, I already came in knowing how to do stuff. I'd already been you know, an entrepreneur for 10 years at that time, and at least knew a lot of stuff about business, right? Maybe not per se how to build a personal brand. But I knew a lot about business from making mistakes, having big wins and, and everything in between. So I did have that but you guys all have those leg leg ups too. I'm also a really good writer. Um, but that takes a lot of practice too. And there's a different kind of writing that takes place in a personal brand coaching space. And there is when you're writing, for example, for medical companies or supplements, which is, I do a lot of that in my other business. You guys have all these innate gifts too, depending on if you've put a lot more time into um, perfecting your craft or getting better. Those are mine. So I wasn't totally stupid when I wanted to start a business coaching practice and be a speaker and teach as many women as possible how they can have that financial freedom doing what they love and not burning themselves out in the meantime, I wanted to do for you guys what wasn't done for me, what didn't exist for me. And in fact, what I still really don't see um, in existence today coming out of you know a female I see a lot of men teaching sales and men teaching marketing. There aren't as many females doing that. So I saw a hole in the marketplace. I saw a personality hole, meaning I didn't see women who kind of are edgy, like to swear, like to tell it like it is, tell with love um, and keep it really real. I didn't see that out there. In fact, I still don't see that out there. I'm sure it exists. I'm sure there are people. I've just not come across them. And that felt true and genuine to me. So I was like, okay, I could fill a hole in this space. And I already have these uh, talents. And these talents make sense with this business I want to create. I'm not having to learn like every single skill from scratch. I'm not trying to be like a computer programmer. If that was my dream, I could follow it. But that road is going to take longer, right? This made a lot of sense. And it was it's been my dream for many, many years, I had the name actually for something like 10 years. But I was, you know, I left it up to God and divine timing. And this is when it happened. And it made sense because I probably would have crashed and burned earlier. For those who are familiar and binge watch my episodes, which by the way, those of you who do that, and especially you guys let me know in DMs and by sharing the show on social media, I so appreciate you, especially those of you who are doing it and like hiding out in bathrooms with AirPods in your ears at your desk, and you're really supposed to be working. I totally get you. That was me. That's why I just love that. Like I had Tony Robbins CDs in my car. I mean, really. Okay. So let's move on to how I got to the cash. I want to break this down for you. So you guys know, I did not just all of a sudden go on Instagram, create an account and the cash started flowing in. I know that there's a lot of people out there making it seem like, oh, make five figures in one month. Um, Bullshit. Okay. Unless you are, you know, Britney Spears is your sister, or you have some like incredible press connections, or you're already a public figure and you're getting into this space, um, I call bullshit. So what I did is I knew it needed to start with a platform that I already enjoyed being on. Because I did learn from all those other years of business, if I don't enjoy it, 
the chances of it growing and flourishing are, are very slim. So I already loved Instagram. I had a personal account. I'm an introvert. I'm someone who takes quality friends over quantity. I'm not a social butterfly. I'm not really a big networking event person. I speak at events. I attend a very select few of networking events. My point is, even today, I have under a 1000 people on my personal Instagram. You guys are feel free to like re- do a friend request on there, whatever it's called, a follow request. Um, I think it's like Tiffany Carter podcaster or something like that. So you can see what I'm talking about. It's not like I already had thousands of people. Um, I have one living family member. Like we got to keep it real here. So I started my Instagram. Um, I started it probably, I would say around March. If we really wanted to know, we could scroll all the way down to my first post. I truly don't remember, and I'm not going to take the time to do that. So what are we, 2019? Okay, so March 2018 um, is when I, approximately, of when I started that Instagram. I already knew when I started it that my whole goal was to build an audience, build a following, and not sell anything, period. I didn't earn the right from anyone to sell them anything. I hate when people um, have this almost entitlement and they they like it's a it's a feeling of greed. And it's also a scarcity mindset, like and, you know, short term thinking like I need to sell something immediately. No, you need to build people's trust you need to build credibility. Yeah, I mean, I do have credibility. I was already a multimillionaire going into this. um, But people don't know who the hell I am. You know, I mean, people in my in the industry that my other business is in. Yes, they they do know who I am. But this is, you know, this is apples and oranges here. So I just started posting. And the posts were weren't great. I mean, I'm a pretty good writer, but I didn't really know the style of writing that was best for Instagram or best for my ideal client or best for um, a personal brand or for being a business coach. Why would I know that I'm freaking new, right? I'm new. And even though I'm not new to business, this is new. I needed market research. I needed the people to tell me what they wanted, what they liked, what they didn't like, what they resonated with. So I just experimented and it was with the stuff that genuinely I wanted to teach that I thought was valuable and that I liked, but I knew it was going to be a process. So I want to say it was a solid four or five months of posting daily, seven days a week. And this did include, um, you know, include Instagram stories. I don't think there, there wasn't IG live yet. This did not include Facebook. In fact, I don't even know if I had a Facebook account. I think you had to, though. There might have been a Facebook account attached, but I didn't nurture my Facebook account. I wasn't in my Facebook Messenger. None of it. Um, I just focused on one thing and one thing only. So I kept I kept in there every single comment I got, I wrote back. I mean, I'm talking I was in there all the time. I was growing my audience. If you guys want to know how to grow your Instagram followers with ideal clients, I have several episodes on that. It's the exact strategy I used. And it's tedious AF. And I did it day after day after day after day with a good attitude and knowing like this takes time, like, It takes time to build relationships. You don't just like meet a cool person and all of a sudden in two days, you're best friends. And if that's the case, it's codependent and unhealthy or the person's a sociopath. P.S. Okay, so I knew that this is going to take time. Um, So about four to five months of nurturing and building my following. Um, I started my podcast. I want to say, and again, it's something else you can scroll back to. Um, I want to say it was June is when I started my podcast. So June 2018. So I didn't even start it right off the top. And again, this is an amazing free resource, not free to me, because it cost me money to put together each episode because I decided since in my wheelhouse, I am a professionally trained broadcaster. And I knew I wanted to go big with the podcast. I started off with a producer and with a coordinator. So I was putting an investment out there. So technically, this company was in debt. But this is good debt. And I talk about that a lot. This was good debt to go into. I got the top podcasting equipment. 
I wanted to go big with this and I had the capital, I had the means and the resources to be able to invest in this. And I was willing to take a gamble and a risk on myself. And clearly we know how it paid off. So again, in June, now I'm driving traffic to my podcast. I'm putting out more free content. Project Me with Tiffany Carter is technically in debt at this point, right? On top of it, I bought this ridiculous iMac top of the line uh, computer because I convinced myself I needed this in order to make all the graphics and everything in which I've used it like, I don't know, maybe five times. And I'm staring at it right now. Thank you. If you want to buy it from me, you can. Just saying. All right. So then June was the podcast. Then it wasn't until August, I would say, sometime in August, where I started offering my private business coaching. Could I have offered it earlier? I sure could have, but I went based off of what felt right. I wanted to get the podcast off the ground where there weren't just like three episodes. You know, I wanted to make sure there was enough episodes so that people who found out I was doing business coaching, most of whom I don't know, could go, okay, like, I want to check out, you know, I want to learn more about this girl first before I invest thousands of dollars with her. And they could listen to me on my podcast. They could read a lot of my posts and my stories. They could go to my website. There's something else they could go to. Now that I did start out, uh, I didn't have the website first, but the website, I don't want to leave that out. I, I did not start the podcast without the website. So the website was June as well. Now, when I add that in, Project Me with Tiffany Carter is now thousands and thousands in debt, but in good debt, okay? Investment debt, debt that there will be a return on, you know, in, in the future, in the near future. Um, so around August is when I started taking private clients because I nurtured my audience. I gave them a lot of high value, great information for free. A lot of myself, as soon as I offered it, since it was my first thing offering, there were quite a few people who were like, oh my God, she's offering something awesome. Did anyone ask me, that I can remember right off the bat, like, did anyone ask me before I started offering it? Do you do business coaching? No, you have to tell the people. (laughs) You just have to tell the people. So once I told the people that I did that, I did end up with quite a few private coaching clients. Nothing was automated in my business. Everything was was from scratch, it got busy enough where I needed to use my my primary longtime assistant, Nancy, from my other company to help me with Project Me because I didn't want to hire another assistant because I'm very mindful of how much is going out, right? You want to be really creative with resources when you're starting because everything you go out is less money than you're going to make. So I had her helping me. Remember, we had a coordinator now is doing podcast interview uh, bookings. I have a producer. I paid for a website. I paid for a graphic artist. That's, you know, we're, we're a lot. We're a lot in the hole right now. Um, so then I started my one on one coaching um, that picked up steadily because I nurtured that audience and continued nurturing that audience. It wasn't like, oh, I just got money coming in, you know, oh, and now I've made it. Now I can stop doing all the tedious stuff of answering every DM and replying to all the comments and posting all the time and doing all the things. Nope, nope, nope. I I kept doing it. And I do it to this day. Now I can hire people and I have that help me out but I keep doing the tedious stuff, the stuff that got me there. Um, It wasn't until having my podcast, I would say, three months in, four months in that it really started taking off. I've shared in other episodes where I was tripping out. Like, I mean, at month two or month three, I didn't have that many downloads. And I was like, holy shit, not that I like you know, expected a million downloads. Again, I'm not someone famous who's starting a show or I didn't already have a well known blog or something like that. And I did not even have an Instagram audience and I started a show. But I'm like, hey, I'm good at this shit. Like I'm professionally trained. And I was kind of freaking out. I was like, my bubble was burst a little bit, but I still kept going. 
And then it started to, um, it just started to take a turn, right? Turn for the better. So then I started reaching out to companies that with things that I already loved and put together sponsorship packages. So sponsorships for um, having advertisements on the podcast, sponsorships for paid to post, um, affiliate deals where, you know, people buy so many of whatever, and I get paid so much on the back end. Um, So I made sure that I got those going. And there's other episodes on how to get sponsored and pay to post. Um, One thing is, though, you do need to make sure you stay in your lane. It's not like, you know, listen, I wasn't going, wasn't going after like Gucci to sponsor me or something. So I was making money from that. Um, Then I started getting because my podcast really started taking off. And I was on other people's shows. I was on Chris Harder's for the for the love of money. I was on Kayla Crafts, Mommy Millionaire. I was on some of these, you know, shows that had more of an audience than mine. And then because of that, I ended up getting more people, more interviews, and then I got some paid speaking gigs. um, Because of that, you know, people could tell I know how to speak. I'm doing a podcast, I'm speaking on other people's shows. I have, you know, a page on my website, making it very clear that I speak. Um, I invested in having videos done for me, professional pictures, professional branding, by the way, that wasn't like $3,000. Now we're getting into the 20 plus thousand dollar range. So you guys can see like, I've, I've spent a lot of money. There's a lot of debt, but at this point there's, there's a lot of money also coming in. So I'm starting, I'm, I got to the break even point pretty quickly. Did you guys know, like in the first two years of business, most businesses are still operating in the red. That's like very standard. And if you have a restaurant or a hotel, it can take even four or five years. So just to keep things real for you guys. Um, So I got paid speaking gigs. Then I started my Project Me Passive Income Posse membership. Um, And that was a way for people to be able to get access to me, live weekly trainings with me and special guests um, in a membership format. And maybe they, you know, don't have the funds yet or weren't ready yet to invest in working with me privately or my wait list did get quite long for a while there. So then people you know, couldn't work with me privately, they needed another way to access me. And so I came up with doing a paid membership. Now there's people out there doing paid memberships that are like $20, $37, $9. I did not feel good about putting a membership together at that price that involved weekly live trainings for me and top industry experts for something that low. So it's $150 up front and 100 a month. I'm highly selective about who comes in there. I think we have over 50 people in there now. So you guys can do the math for yourselves. Um, I have not done a giant public launch for it yet. I'm sure I will. Um, But I just really adore the group and I adore the size of the group at the moment. But you guys can do the math. Now I have, so to speak, that passive income coming in from there. Yes, I do need to get on and train you know, once a week for about an hour, or I have a guest trainer come in. So that's the only active component. So my other active component of my business is actually doing the coaching, my private coaching, right? But I'm getting paid very well for that, because that's a lot more of my, my time and energy. So when you start adding all this stuff up with these multiple streams of income, I grossed in the year that I, you know, from the year to date that I started actually, you know, selling things through Project Me with Tiffany Carter, grossed $270,000. It wasn't just from one source of income. It's from multiple sources, which is exactly what I teach you guys how to do. This is exactly what I teach my private coaching clients how to do, which by the way, so you guys know, because I want to make sure you are set up for the best 2019 to end it in the best way and get set up really ready to go, already going for 2020. I've opened up three additional private coaching spots with me. We are capping it at 50 applications. So once we receive 50 applications, it will close. There will be no spots offered for 2019. So go on Instagram at Project Me with Tiffany. 
You can also go on my website, projectmewithtiffany.com under work with me and fill out the application. I accept about 30% of the people who apply. Um, You will hear from me either which way. If you're not accepted, it's not like, oh, you know, you're horrible. You're not accepted. It's that I don't feel we're the best fit. You might not be ready for me yet. I might feel you need something else first in good integrity. And I will share that with you, you know, so that you have guidance. It's not going to be like, well, what the hell am I supposed to do with myself? Um, So I just wanted to let you guys know that. But I do teach why it's so important to have multiple streams of income. If you don't have things that are passive income oriented going on, passive and residual plus active, you won't be able to make that kind of money. It's not possible. So I also have a network marketing um, arm in my Project Me business too. So people who want to, you know, would rather work within an existing company versus starting a company from scratch, right? And they want to bring in additional money. I work um, with doTERRA. So because I love essential oils anyway. So people who want to join my network marketing team, they can join my network marketing team. And then I make, you know, some money off of that as well. And I have a business partner with that. So I'm not answering all the questions and having to do all the heavy work. That's what she does full time. So I'm able to focus on other things, but still get people, you know, where they want to go. So I hope this really helped you guys see how you can get to that number and it be realistic, but you've got to have multiple streams of income and they can't all be active because there's only one of you. You'll burn out if you're side hustling too. It's not going to happen. Remember, I did all this while managing and running a seven figure other company with very demanding corporate clients. So this wasn't me like grinding it out 70 hours a week either, because I don't believe in that anymore. So I want you guys to know that that's possible for you as long as you have a strategy and map it out and you stay consistent as all hell. And I also want to end on this note. Making $270,000 in that year, that is gross. Gross means before expenses and taxes. So I brought in that much. But remember, I talked about I had a full top notch branding done, photography, props, stylist, graphics, website, podcast producer, podcast coordinator, I hired a social media manager, I hired an editor, I mean, I had a lot of money that I've also spent. So that's gross. What did I net? We, I still would have to go in and really give true calculations to give you like to the dollar answer, approximately 150 to 170, which is still great. But I want you guys to know like the real deal with these numbers. And a lot of times when you hear people touting these numbers online, they're giving you their gross figures. Not that that's not impressive. It is. But some people, because they really aren't familiar and know how to handle money management and know how to truly run a business, they may have made 300000 but they spent $310,000. I mean, so what really matters is like, what do you got in the bank, girl? You know what I'm saying? You guys have any question about you know, questions about my coaching style, business coaching, where you can find the applications to fill out. Um, again, we're capping it at 50 applications. You can DM me at Project Me with Tiffany. Um, otherwise, go fill out the application at projectmewithtiffany.com if it's something you're interested in. If not, sending you much love and keep listening to the show. Wishing you great health, wealth, and worth as always. Talk to you guys soon. If you enjoyed this podcast, please write a five-star review on iTunes. Not only will this make me super happy, but it will allow more listeners to find our special show. Simply help me help others.